October 31st. Happy Halloween and stuff. Welcome to another episode of Stan's Hall. We're in chapter one of the Art of War, and we're going to dive right in. So we're going to take these each verse one at a time because the alternate translation really, uh, really gets into each one of them. So verse 20, if he is secure at all points, be prepared for him. If he is in superior strength, evade him. 21. If your opponent is of choleric temper, seek to irritate him. Pretend to be weak, that he may grow arrogant. I like that one particularly because uh, even for somebody like me, I'm tall and I was pretty big back in the day, but but appearing to be weak has always, um, whether I knew it or not, served me in the long run. Because at the end of the day, you know yourself, and that's all that matters is you know your inner strength doesn't really matter what other people think so if you can make them think that you're weak when your inner strength is strong and you have your principles and your morals and your ethics at the end of the day you're going to win because you've always just done things the right way or for the right reasons for people all right so let's see what master sun says when they are fulfilled be prepared against them when they are strong avoid them Dumu says that if the enemy's government is fulfilled, meaning that there is mutual love between the rulers and the ruled, there is clarity and trustworthiness in the system of rewards and punishments, and the soldiers are well trained, then you should be on guard against them. Do not wait for a clash to make your preparations. When the enemy's military is strong, you should avoid them for the time being, waiting until they slack off, waiting for an opening to attack. Chin Hao says, if the enemy does not stir, is complete and fulfilled, then you should prepare carefully. Fulfill yourself too, so as to be ready for them. Ho Yong Chi says that if you only see fulfillment in the enemy and do not see any gap, then you should build up your power to be prepared. Deng Yu says a classic is struggling with them, you find out where they have plenty and where they are lacking. Having plenty is what is meant by being fulfilled. Lacking is what is meant by having gaps. Once the military power of the adversary is full, you should treat them as, as if they are unbeatable and not attack lightly. So, we need to use this... Um, you know, to be, to be fulfilled. If you are fulfilled, you're unbreakable, basically. As a military guy that says, when you see a gap, then advance. When you see fullness, then stop. So people aren't going to, people aren't going to test you. And, and, you know, it's like the stronger you get, the more wealthy you get, the, 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 the more people are like, oh crap, you know, and the more confidence you can have in yourself. GLN says, for the weak control the strong, it is logically necessary to await change. Du Yu says that when their storehouses are full and their soldiers are in top form, then you should withdraw in order to watch for an opening when they relax, observing any changes and responding to them. Master Sun says, use anger to throw them into disarray, to which Cao Cao says, wait for them to become decadent and lazy. Actually, I was just thinking about this as far as the American people is concerned. I mean whether you're dismantling it from the inside or trading goods into a country, you know, entertainment, food, pornography, video games, just even certain kinds of books, depending on the subject matter. All of this stuff serves to make the people feel like they're the intellectual, the intelligentsia, um, and then they get fat and they don't have calluses on your hands. And then you have a situation like Mao where he turns over your hands. And if they're not callous, off with your head. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, we're, we're full force, like going towards socialism or communism or anything these days and days. But it's just always something to, to think about, you know, when you're becoming decadent and lazy, how easy are you thrown into disarray? So the antithesis, right? Lee Kwan says, when the military leadership is often angered, its strategy is easily thrown into confusions for its nature is unstable. Dumu says that when their military leadership is obstrep obstreperous, obstreperous, it's dashed. Um, so it like, goes to the next line. When their military leader is obstreperous, you should irritate them to make them angry. Then they will become impetuous and ignore their original strategy. Hey, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's probably like good to say that out loud but that is kind of like a tactic you learn as a child you know just like make them angry and then like their original plan just falls to pieces may yao chen says if they are quick tempered then stir them up to excite them so they go into battle care carelessly okay so i mean all of this just makes me think of like football in high school especially when some of the older guys would talk trash to the guys across on the other side of the line whether it's defense or offense and it just it, 
it gets them stirred up and it gets them off their game. Jang Yu says, if they are violent and easily angered, then use embarrassment to enrage them so that their morale is upset. Then they will proceed carelessly without formulating a plan. And then the antithesis of that is to feign emotion, right? Like a psychopath. Pretend you're weak when you're strong. So like also being aware of all of that, like also being able to perform all of those actions as the moat to your castle walls, essentially of like, I'm strong. I know who I am. I have all of this going on, but you almost place this facade in front of you of this person who's unstable, who goes in without a plan, who's easily upsettable, very emotional. And if like Sun Tzu says, warfare is deception and life is warfare in a lot of ways, deceiving people into thinking that you're stupid is you know i i wrote about it uh personally and i think i think it's it's an appropriate strategy um unless you're faking it till you make it if you know the antithesis of what you're saying and you're feigning ignorance or stupidity as a tactic and you're employ it, it purposely employing it then i think that's okay but if you're if you're arrogant and you're pretending to be arrogantly stupid i don't know there's uh, there's nuances to it, but I think the important thing that we need to glean from all of that is that people just like certain forms of martial arts can use your momentum against you and more or less like the drunken fist style of fighting, which is like so memeified these days, but being either either able to feign a certain momentum and then that's like not your momentum or be able to feign the momentum in order to pull a counter strategy, right? Because you're anticipating like a chess move. If I do this, then he'll do this. I'll sacrifice this, but I'll gain this. It's like a boom, boom, boom strategy of like, I'm going to go sacrifice this rook in order so that my knight can take his queen, hoping that he sends the queen after the rook in, in, you know, because I look like I'm stupid and arrogant and I like make this bullheaded move to sacrifice my rook. But what he doesn't see is like, you know, my, my bishop over here or whatever. And it's just the same thing. Use the momentum and use other people's emotions against them and then use emotions for yourself against yourself in order to i think that i think i know what you're thinking you think i think i thought kind of deal um even though that's not exactly it but you know what i mean if, if you employ the strategy as a defense as long as you're aware of the strategy and it's working as a way to like send your emotional counterpart out there to fight while you're actually mentally thinking of like what needs to be done you're just like you're you're employing base level intelligence over here in order to like just keep the stupid people away in a sense so october 31st you were born good not the stupid people let's see the emotional easily angered um and the people that aren't going to help you move forward in life not that they're stupid how about that october 31st you were born good this is from the daily stoic ryan holiday and stephen hanselman a very good book. I have two copies myself. The Daily Dad is a fantastic book as well. Um, almost better in a way, depending on what stage of life, period of life, season of life that you're in. The human being is born with an inclination towards virtue. Musonius Rufus Lectures 2.7.1-2. to That's important. This is why so many atheists are so mad at all all of the Christians and all of the religious people because sometimes religions become inquisitory to say the least and then there's blood and and then it's not virtuous so let's see what they say the notion of original sin has weighed down humankind for centuries in reality we're made to help each other and to be good to each other we wouldn't have survived as a species otherwise there's hardly an idea in Soviet philosophy that wouldn't be immediately agreeable to a child or that doesn't jive with common sense. The ideas within it go to the core. Jive. Isn't it jive? Like, doesn't jive? J-I-V-E? 
grooving and jiving, you know? Okay. The ideas within it go to the core of who we are and what we know to be true. The only things they conflict with are the various inventions of society, which usually serve some selfish interests more than they benefit the common good. You were born good. All of us have been made by nature, Rufus said, so that we can live free from error and nobly. Not that one can and another can't, but all. You were born with an attraction to virtue and self-mastery. Right? So like that inner discipline, like that concept of self-excellence. It's what we're after. Like the concept of like just be the best version of yourself that you can be. Knowing that you're going to fall and that's why we're reinforcing ourselves every day with all of these little things. If you've gotten far from that, it's not out of some inborn corruption, but from a nurturing of the wrong things and the wrong ideas. So if you've gotten far from that, it's not out of some inborn corruption. It's just you, your thoughts become who you are. The ideas that you slosh around in your mind and repeat, those become your reality. And... As Seneca has pointed out, philosophy is a tool to strip it all the way to get back to our true nature. Okay, so that's the, like, man, that's a nice little cherry on top. Because it's like, that's what philosophy is all about. It's to release us from the chains of society and what's holding us down and, and what's putting pressures on us. You know, the news, in my experience, has always been telling us what to think, how to act, what other people, you know, everyone's poor, the economy is bad, there's wars all over the world, it's so bad, it's so bad, it's so terrible, okay, and I get having a big heart is huge, and these are people too, and I think, I think that's where a lot of people's dichotomous slash bipolar thoughts come from, is like, their heart aches for citizens, for people across on the other side of the world who are just trying to live their life just like we are and are struggling and are having these crazy, you know, atrocities forced upon them by because of warfare. And at the end of the day though, that stirs up your emotions just like Sun Tzu is saying, you know, if you're easily if you like use that against your enemy, if they're able to easily get emotion and just, you know, get them fat and decadent you know, get them fat and decadent off of negative emotions as well. It's all, it's all warfare strategy it just depends on who, who is the messenger. And I think that's what the philosophy and the stoicism and the studying the art of war all come together under the banner of don't like stay true to yourself. Use this philosophy to, to rip away the preconceived notions and the curses of generations to see life for what it is, to get back to nature. You have like principles by Ray Dalio, just observe nature, the order of nature, and you will get your answers. And so that's why we study the warfare. You know, we, we've, we've got to be at the top of the food chain. And yes, we live in a great society that's progressing towards better outcomes and we have the only way to do that is to be good and to be better ourselves um, and keep standing tall. So uh, I'm getting long winded, but that's it. I mean, that's it. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.